Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are in the world today, I greet you in the precious and holy name of Jesus Christ, my Savior, and I hope yours. And today I want to restate something that I said in a former broadcast, might have been the last one, and that is that we are indeed one people. We are all citizens of the world, and the mere fact that we are dealing with the COVID virus, virus, coronavirus, COVID-19, COVID-19, I'm so sorry, um, proves that whatever is affecting one person in one part of the world is definitely at this time affecting everyone. Of 100, I think, in 90 countries in the world, 145 or so are dealing with uh, COVID-19. Um, and not that it in itself is so fatal or lethal, but in that if you have a compromised immune system, which all of us probably do because of just the food we eat over here in the West, then you are really, um, you could be dealing with something that is, is very final. And so we're praying that that is not going to be the case for anyone listening nor for all the people that have all gone on and passed on at this time. We're praying still that the mercy of God will intervene and some of this ravaging of human life will stop. However, if this is God's plan and will and is your time or mine, we praise him and we thank him that we have come uh, on a journey through the life that he's given us to not just live, but to actually gain eternal life. And so with that, we're going to talk again today a little bit more about stewardship. As I told you also, when I came into this new year, uh, for me in the West, it's in the year of January, for you in the East or where it may be another time of year. Um, but nonetheless, I came into our new year with a contemplation of the word resolve and as i uh sought the lord to find out you know you know i was just in my devotions etc not not particularly to find out about the word itself but to um to understand why i was thinking about this word so much and uh the lord took me to the book of luke and i read the parables and all of those parables from my my understanding really most of them have to do with stewardship being careful over that which the Lord has entrusted you to um, to have during your lifetime and the expectation that he has of us gaining an interest, doubling, tripling, doing something with that stewardship. And for me, uh, and maybe for you, the stewardship is an artistic uh, give. You never just have one. I, I think people are more brilliant than, than they even realize stewardship has to do with everything that God has invested in you and imparted to you that you may become a conduit of his glory and a witness for those who are lost after you be are saved yourself you want to share Christ however you share Christ and uh, someone else will come to know him in the pardon of their sins and they will be um, also the recipients of eternal life so with that I want to bring back my dear friend and, and former guest, uh, Yvette Altis Plummer, who gave us quite a testimony of her uh, beginnings as a Christian. And the message that she delivered that day has been one of interest to some some comments that I received. And I'm going to I'm going to actually have one little 15 minute segment where I just read some of the comments and refer them to the particular um, broadcast or podcast that, that we've given because I've, I've gotten some really great uh, comments, even to my uh, a, a salvation message that came. And I really want to share that with you and show you how very much I appreciate you being here as we talk. So I'm not going to do any more talking. I want to introduce Yvette again. So Yvette, if you would, please, ma'am, say hello to the listening audience. Hi, guys. How are you? It's so good to be here with you. Yes. And it's so good for us to be here with you again, because as I said, Yvette, your, your um, testimony in the last um, interview that we, we aired was one of great interest 
and uh, so I wanted to follow up with that not that they are all are all everyone that I've had on this uh, podcast or you know most of these by the way were done like in 2012 2013 and that's why as an archive I overlooked yours and I've told the listening audience that I think the Lord hid it away from me because it so feeds into the contemplation of, of being resolved to be or to let the Lord make you a good steward and so in our last uh, conversation you in talking about your gifts and your participation in the work of Love Calling, our theater ministry, you actually also testified of your um, salvation from atheism and, and coming into Christianity, right? So I want to pick up on that discussion. Since our conversations have to do with evangelism, it is uh, a, an appropriate uh, topic for both evangelizing and stewardship. So let's let's get started with this. I really uh, want to heed a comment that I got and that they are sometimes too long. So I want them to be interested and I don't want them to, to over, you know, to kind of keep you sitting around saying, oh gosh, when are they gonna finish? So we're gonna go right ahead and try to get some real substance covered in this interview. And if necessary, we'll come back and do a second one. But this one, um, we're going to try to get through in a reasonable amount of time. And number one, I want to, uh, first of all, Yvette is, has said, hello. Do you want to say anything else before we get started, Yvette? Glad that we're together and whatever it is that I share, that it, it's um, something that you identify with and it will help you. Um, I am so glad, Pray that it is a productive time good to be here with you guys amen very good and just as you said that is our prayer lord god that we we come to this podcast not just to talk or to talk about evangelism or to expose the artistic gifts that have just been a part of my life and in the people that i know but that those words that we speak will have the uh, weight of your anointing so that lord it would answer a a probe or a a query that someone is going through or having at this time or it will further uh, someone's dedication to share all that they are for the sake of your kingdom and your glory and that someone others will hear and be drawn to you and that father by your spirit you will speak to their hearts and their minds and you will cause them to bow to you and become born again of your spirit and therefore the recipients of eternal life and members of your beautiful, wonderful, coordinated, unified church in this world. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, um, like I said, Yvette, in our last conversation, you revealed that you had been an atheist. Now, I I knew that, right? But so I didn't I didn't really stop to kind of deal with that. But in a few comments that I got. I realize that that is a it's a subject that we we really need to talk about a little bit because there are probably lots of people out there who are themselves at this moment in time atheist and so um the mere fact that you were that and you came to know christ could you tell us what drove you from catholicism uh, into atheism because if you you mentioned that you were raised catholic but then you ended up as a young woman, um, a, an atheist. So could you t could you just talk about that for us, please, ma'am? Surely. Uh, here I am at that time, an 18 year old, graduating from Sicilian Academy, and having gone through all the different things I was supposed with going to church every Sunday, going to Mass, mm -hmm. or going to confession, um, studying about catechism, and um, but I didn't see any um, real, uh, I didn't feel anything. Mm -hmm. And now, I, of course, at the time I was Catholic, there were other people who were Protestants, and so they may have had um, the different. I didn't know all the different uh, 
uh, groups, uh, the denominations, the religious denominations. Uh, but I knew that uh, there were a lot of times got the pastors who are the ministers, who are the preachers, who are, um, you know, very charismatic, very dramatic, mm -hmm. and they're, you know, doing all kinds of things, and they're skipping across the stage, and I'm thinking, hmm, what is that? Mm -hmm. But these, but the people who are in churches, in those churches, are feeling really good, and I says, well, I don't feel any of that stuff, in, you know, in the uh, Catholic church, mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't feel that God existed, and even though I had studied it and all that, I didn't know for sure. And I just said, you know what? If you really are for real, you come and get me, because I think I'm believing. There's no, yeah. there's no um, evidence of your being real to me. So I remember looking up at the sky and saying that. Now, mind you, I was a devout Catholic, right? But I just, I'll just when it, it didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. And I guess I also did not like all the Jews that I had you know, seen. And part of it was a culture of religion, I guess. And um, and you feel guilty because you know, part of it was a mea culpa, mea culpa, my fault, my fault. And I just, what? Right. You know, right. So I wanted the freedom to do what I wanted to do. I wanted the freedom to think the box and, and the thing. I wanted to think, and it didn't go along with with, with Catholicism. Um, it didn't matter. I um, I wanted to uh, get rid of uh, restrictions. I wanted to enjoy my life, and uh, and so I felt if I had eliminated what I've been taught in catechism, which really didn't relate to me anyway, then I would I would explore life the way on my terms, you know, mm. and because uh, I didn't see any evidence of God's love and God's mm. dear, um, any, and you know, I, I just wanted, to, and I wanted to explore life without any restrictions of religion, but mine to define it out for myself. So that was, that was what it was. Oh, it wasn't God. any special situation that made me turn away from him, but, but just graduating and going to college, and I just wanted to explore. I right. want the freedom to be able to do that without feeling guilty. Right, right. Isn't that amazing? Right. So I was Catholic also in my early life, right? But I didn't, uh -huh. I, I didn't um, start off Catholic. My mother and father were Baptist. And as a little girl, I had gone to the Baptist church. Like when I say little, I mean before I was six, because it was at age six that, um, or seven, somewhere their mother started to uh, send us to, you know, to the Catholic church. So I kind of grew up there. So it, what I'm, I'm bringing that in because our experiences were very different. However, I concur with this. I didn't really necessarily... Well, yeah, I can't even say that. I did feel some things in Catholicism. But what I did not feel is what I have since experienced uh, being the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. And that may be with knowledge or whatever. I don't know. I do think I had some Holy, Holy Spirit filled moments as a Catholic. But anyway, I just I just want to say to the audience, we all we can have similar experiences and those experiences be so very different the events can be the same but our response to those events very different and that's the point that Yvette is now making and I'm trying to a uh, second that emotion right because I I was very much Catholic and it's a very different experience being Catholic is so different than the Protestant Church um, and someday we might even get into that so uh, Yvette thinks that's good did you which so you looked up and you said you'll come after me I love that. Let's not forget that you said that uh, in this broadcast. So you went off because you wanted to be able to experience life without the guilt. And let me tell you, Catholics, it's funny. It's both guilt-ridden and then it's, the, it's extremely free. So there's a dichotomy going on in that thing. So you went off, though, and you began to experience life on your own terms. Um, yeah. And I, I just want to know, did you, f did you uh, enjoy the freedom that you now had to just indulge in the pleasures of life like you wanted to and um just be absent from that whole 
God guilt thing that, that can come uh, from being around p spiritual people, by the way? Um, yeah, I think it's death. Mm -hmm. I didn't enjoy that freedom. I didn't have any guilt feelings, and that was the thing, the guilt. Ah. So I kind of explored various uh, philosophies um, and religions, and I enjoyed not having, not feeling guilty about not going to Mass or not going to confession mm -hmm. um, and um, not feeling guilty about sin. You know, I had this desire to have freedom of free love and um, sexual pleasures and yeah. and to do what I, if I chose to or not choose to, you know, but it wasn't because somebody else was uh, this this uh, religious uh, ethics, this code was saying, yeah, I can't do that. Yeah. And so, yeah, I did enjoy the um, uh, freedom and to be able to indulge, indulge in what the pleasure of the world were. Mm. Um, uh, it's, it, I, I needed um, to feel, uh, explore uh, different ideas and world systems uh, without being told it was bad or it didn't fit in with Christian or Catholic, you know, Catholic doctrine. Yeah. Um, and, and yet, after a while, after what I'm talking years, right. you realize that there are limits anywhere. There are rules and regulations in, in your job, in government, there's for the protection of people. Mm -hmm. And so um, that I really was, um, I don't know, I was searching, but I, I don't know that was really that fulfilling. Right. Okay. And you know what? The, the interesting thing about your this discussion is that during the time that you were young, uh, a young woman, and college days, they were also my days. And I remember so much discussion about self-actualization, becoming who you are and realizing your own um, value and worth but not in a in a uh, spiritual way, in a world sense. So uh, that you say you really were not actually all that satisfied after a while. Is that is that what I hear you saying? Yeah. Um, uh, I, 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 for a time, I did feel guilt. I felt guilt free and intellectually satisfied. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's no limitations of my spirit. You know. However, there were times that I really, in, in, in retrospect, I needed to have a higher power to do, to or to kind of rely on. Right. Um, I remember the time I was in uh, New York uh, going to an audition, uh, and it's, uh, the, I was on this elevator, and it's a skyscraper, so we're going all the way up. The door closes, and there's a man on the elevator with me. And he, now I is a pilot, so um, he lights this match and he looks at it. And all of a sudden I'm realizing this man does not have a cigarette and he's just at this, at this match. Is he going to burn me up? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what can I do? Help myself, save myself. Oh my goodness. And mm -hmm. you know, the elevator is up to going, it's nonstop up to like the second floor, it's 20 something floor, you know? Yeah. And here I am on this elevator, and um, I remember feeling this so helpless and wishing someone to, to, to help me and to believe in. Mm. And I would have asked God to help me had I believed in him or her. Or mm -hmm. And Mm. The words 
just came, and I'm sure it was from the Holy Spirit, but at the time it wasn't, you know, mm-hmm. I didn't know about the Holy Spirit. But those ideas came to me, something to distract them until I could act, get off later. Mm-hmm. And what kind of conversation could I have with this man? And so um, <laughs> he didn't, I don't remember, but it's been about, you know, 50 years ago. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't tell your age. <laughs> of you being on that elevator and you were on there with the man alone yes <laughs> and he struck a match is that true yes he just struck this match you know back then we had books you know a little a book yeah, of matches right, right, struck right. Match, but there was I realized there was no cigarette and he was why just holding this man, yeah why is this man striking this match and he's just holding it up and looking at it and uh and and he did look a bit disheveled you know how uh back when you're young you just avoid all kinds of um uh, uh caution mm-hmm. and um I, I don't even know if it was that or i just wasn't observing or didn't matter not that someone who looks disheveled i mean there are people who are well dressed who have a lot of issues 
But I'm looking back now, and I don't know what the person was, what the person was, but he was clearly disturbed. To, you know, just like a match and hold it up like that. You know, and so uh, I didn't know where he was going, or whatever. And I think he may have done two of them. So, <laughs> so you see <laughs> now, now I listen. Really can't. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't think if there maybe one went out or something, and then he just dropped the other one. And I think mm -hmm. that was probably when I looked, I realized this is not too good, and what mm -hmm. can I do? What can I say? Mm -hmm. And started beginning to have a conversation somehow to divert so, his attention and to get him to, uh, to you know, to stop. Right, <laughs> to right, right. Off anyway. Well, the, the, when you say that to me, I go back to you looking up and saying, Lord, you'll come after me. And yes. now you're on the, an elevator and somebody strikes a match and there's fire. And the fire is symbolic of, of course, with the absence of God and hell. So then you ask him, are you going to burn me? And he, he answers, uh, am, am I supposed to light something or something like that, right? So... Um, I don't know. In all of that, I get a sense that the Lord is speaking with Yvette and he's trying to, he's saying something to her about salvation and about um, being a, apart from the Lord. So, uh, we, you know, we're back on and I um, I'm just interested to know, Yvette, if it even occurred to you that the Lord was speaking to you through this lit fire you know that, that this man did that that was a very 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 different experience so i can't believe that it was just uh just isolated it's just an isolated nothing that someone would get on an elevator with you you're all by yourself in a big building in new york city going to an audition and he strikes a match burns the match and you ask him what are you gonna are you gonna burn me with that and what did he say <laughs> no i i just asked him something to the effect of are you going to use that match uh-huh uh, yeah are you going to use it i don't uh something he said like that i don't think i asked him was anyone burning well what did he say what did he say i, I misheard you he didn't say, he didn't say anything I see. Than, um oh or uh, I don't remember his saying anything but oh uh -huh. and um huh. uh, he didn't talk. Wow. He just he just looked the match and held a look at. Wow. So darling yeah see now looking back on that really and truly my mind really goes uh in a very spiritual sense there that uh the lord is showing was showing you something but i speculate uh you've already said though that you now were needing well that that event caused you to know that you really needed someone to call on when uh -huh. there was no one else to call on and that would have been god had you believed so from there you go on and um you know uh your life continues but you are you you became aware that you needed something more than what you had in terms of yeah, yeah relationship a divine relationship that's um, is that right a divine relationship not just the relationships of life mm -hmm. Yeah, I knew I needed something. Well, it made me start to think, is there a higher power? Right. And I didn't miss that because that really was in my uh, 20s, you know, mm -hmm. early. You know, uh, I got that, that happened when I was in my teens. Oh, my teens. okay. I, you know, I, I hadn't even, no, I hadn't graduated at that point. So. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, so I, I, I kind of dismissed it. Now I see that was God's mercy and that was his grace. Mm -hmm. I couldn't see that then. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, I remembered thinking, wow, if I had believed in if this God is a male, female, or an it, mm -hmm. that would make me feel better. But it still didn't keep me from having to go into the problem. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't believe in him. <laughs> so, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I and, see. So there was a series of things. And that was... You know, after that, I mean, I was, uh, you know, I 
was okay with that. Mm-hmm. I um, uh, did my career thing. And, um, again, being involved with relationships. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I guess within about another uh, 10 years, maybe, um, I started uh, seeing stuff on TV. Mm-hmm. And whenever I would see these these tele ministers, I just despised them. Oh <laughs> and, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, just, I saw them give ask them give money to people, and they were skipping across the stage performing and, and making folks feel guilty, and um, you know, um, and I could just still saying that this is this God who just allows bad things to happen to people. Mm-hmm. So I just kind of, I remember the the first husband said um, something to the effect, he had something on, turned the TV, it crossed, it it went, you know, he was changing channels, and I said, um, I just despise those people, all those don'ts and those do's, and you can't do this, you can't think for yourself, and uh, oh, Mm -hmm. and he said to me, I bet you're going to be more, I can put that, Later on in life, you may be just like those people, or you might be even more religious <laughs> than they are. And I cussed him out. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> wow! And and he said, <laughs> "I'm gonna just laugh." You know, like, <laughs> wow. So say later on it did happen. It did. <laughs> and he lived to see it and witness it too, I tell you. That's amazing. <laughs> well, still is a prophet after all. My goodness, that's that's really funny. Yeah. So <laughs> and he, but what he witnessed was not the traditional uh uh you know what what we had seen, what I was what I was battling against, what I saw on that T V. Right, 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 right version was true love and true forgiveness and uh, what the gospel really is. Right. That's what he saw. Right. So I really didn't become like those people. <laughs> well, no. However, when you're outside looking in and watching people worship, it can be interpreted, you know, in several ways. But yeah. you're, you're right. It was it was true love for some of those people that you were watching on television too. Also, you know, it was probably true love. The minister may not have been uh, exactly true in what he was saying or doing, um, but some those people were being, you know, they were drawn into something. Whatever that that's just funny um, that he said that, and then you actually have indeed become not that but you have become a a true believer and a worshiper of god in the real sense of the word now uh, so so that's good i'm glad you told that because you've you've told us a lot and and you've covered some of the questions that i'm that i had um in your in your discussing it so you began to quest or feel that you needed a higher power, but you still went on with life and pursued a career and, you know, did your thing um, as we all did. And then in the last broadcast, you tell us about a young a young person who was in a class, your class, and she was late and you, you chided her for being late and all this stuff. And so probably that, that young girl prayed for you, but... I know that, um, you know, from from your talking with me, that you had a really dear friend, uh, Lisa, who, <laughs> who was um, probably, above all, really praying for you because she was also witnessing to you, right? Yes, absolutely, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say that um, uh, oh, God just comes I'm sorry. Say it again. Here we go then. Um, Before you continue, Yvette, I want the listening audience to know that you are coming by phone. And so, you know, cell phones, guys, that these things are reliable and sometimes they're not so reliable. So we are pausing. If you hear some pausing in here, it's because of the cell phone. 
So we're going to just pick right up and continue with Yvette now. She's telling us about her friend Lisa. And I know that I know Lisa as well. And Lisa is very, very a committed Christian as well. And so I was saying that Lisa probably was praying for you a lot and witnessing to you, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, and I wanted to say that I think God had he prepared the area for the way for me. Um, uh, in that in my life, I'm, uh, I'm married, have a, 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 a little girl, and uh, I'm teaching and uh, the high school and the a student of mine. Um, I'm chiding her because she's late, because she's she's falling asleep that's what it is she was falling asleep in class Mm -hmm. and um uh that was because she was going staying long time to church and she was commuting back and forth from new york so i uh told her that she just you know you christians spend too much time in church and you gotta have more reasons your priorities have to be straight and you gotta get your homework done you gotta be in school and stay awake I can't believe I did that, but I did. Mm-hmm. And she and she commented that that um, later on she wouldn't do it in front of folks. And she, but I was I wasn't nasty or mean, but I just meant I gently said that to her. And I think I even said it to her after class, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, she said, "Miss Altice, I'm going to pray for you too." And I remember responding, uh, "I don't need no prayers, honey. I just need you to be awake and alert because it's going to you need this information." Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. So, but, uh, <laughs> not only was that happening, so she was praying, and we were at the high school. Time, I have a, uh, I have a wonderful, wonderful uh, spiritual mother. Um, was my aunt and. Um, and my uncle, my mother's brother, they, they, they were very, well, he was what I call religious. Mm-hmm. And so I just really did not. I loved him, but I did not like how he was. Mm-hmm. And so we were, I mean, at one point I just finally said, Uncle Taylor, how do you know God exists? Mm-hmm. Um, there's no proof. And look at all the stuff that's going on. And he then, he he became angry, and then he stopped, and I misinterpreted what he said. Just years now, over 30 some years ago, he said, well, I can't talk to you anymore. And I misconstrued that to me. He was not going to talk to me because I refused to believe in his God. Mm-hmm. And so there was some strain there you know mm-hmm. and uh i now know what he meant he was saying it's hard for me to talk to you because everything i talk about is in terms of god i don't he said i don't know how to talk to you mm-hmm. so um but i couldn't understand it back then but his wife my aunt rosetta just loved on me and when i say they question her and, and i you know i she just did not come down on me and you God's gonna hurt you none of that at all and so at the time I was going over their home quite a bit I moved to Willingboro and they were also within five minutes of me in, in town mm-hmm. and um they uh were they were not going to church well that was point number one that I could relate to because they weren't going to church mm-hmm. uh but they were in transition and they were you know they were the, the family of god but they were doing church online kind of thing and fred price was the person they were we were watching and they had discussions and all that and so now mind you my daughter at the time is a t- little tyke and she's going over she's my aunt is taking care of her Ha-ha! so my aunt is taking care of her i go over and we talk and i see that they have this fellow on and he's not frothing at the mouth jumping across the stage not begging for money mm. and he's talking uh, practically and to me with soundly and intellectually and i said I can deal with that. That's mm-hmm. interesting. I would listen to him. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And so I would. I had. So there was the environment that was set for me. Mm-hmm. And so uh, from that, then I, again, I was going through. My marriage was falling apart, and um, 
I ended up staying with them for a short period of time. Uh, and so again, I'm exposed to uh, how they are. And I remember saying to my aunt, you know what? I like what you've got. Mm. You're not going to church. You are loving and you're very satisfied and fulfilled. And she was involved with the, the community and she was one of these emergency responder uh, with the, the telephones. On the weekends, you had to pick up the children early because they would bring the telephones to her. And so she was the, the operator who would um, direct calls and into the police and to the the the, the, uh, the firemen and emergency and and so I like that she was involved with the community uh, she was active she was happy she was fulfilled and she was very spiritual and loving and and folks in the family um, had alcohol issues she never derided them she loved on them she just made sure when we had family gatherings that she did not serve alcohol, but if they brought it, they'd have to have, you know, some decorum. Mm -hmm. So I just, she was just different. She wasn't judgmental. So I said, Auntie, I want what you got. I just don't want any of that Jesus stuff. Mm -hmm. and, she said, mm -hmm. and she said to me, well, that's what I got. I got Jesus. <laughs> I looked at her and I said, what? Yeah. <laughs> And 
found out that she was a believer. Well, now here's this young woman who is going to be helping me with my daughter. I'm helping her with her son. So I'm not going to try to offend her, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But, but <laughs> I am interested in what she's saying. Mm-hmm. And um, fun things too this as well as we talked and we shared i could see that she was an attorney and so she had her own thoughts she had her own career and she wasn't dependent and you know uh she was struggling emotionally and, and a little bit financially with this separation but she was still thinking on her own and she was a believer and i thought that was kind of strange and i you know she was self-actualizing the whole thing so we became very good friends. She didn't force anything on me, but her lifestyle was just so different. And despite the emotional pain she was going through, we both were going through. It didn't. Uh, it didn't stop us. It did not pre- prevent us from pursuing our um, uh, careers. Uh, and our uh, things that we uh, our advocations and so we shared a lot and she was saying to me now she says girl you were so difficult you all ask all these questions and she's all <laughs> <laughs> saying to God God help me with her because I can't answer her questions all the questions and she's a rough one and I guess I really was I was tough <laughs> so yeah. uh Oh, it's, just, it's very exciting, right? And and we've come up to uh, now our time is is um, running out quickly here. So um, I can see that we're going to have to make two uh, another recording. So there, this will be one and the next one, so that we can finish it because it's very interesting. And the thing is, for the audience to know, I. R- kind of came to know Yvette just at her conversion, but I never knew that. I didn't know that until the last inter- the interview that we had, that that's when I was meeting you. You know, you had just gotten to Trinity and it might have not been just at the conversion, but it was soon into it. So uh, I want to finish this up. I really want to hear the whole of the story. And the reason is not because it's a sensational story, but because our testimonies bring others into a relationship with Christ simply because whatever the barrier is uh, that keeps one from believing in Christ is covered sometimes for for the individuals in testimonies. So when I, you know, if I'm sitting and I'm listening and you say uh, they went to church too much, like that, that you repeat that several times. So that church thing was a problem for you (laughs) and that maybe it's a problem for me but now i'm listening and i hear and it it kind of clears some things up in my own mind so testimony is is so powerful and so needful in the kingdom of god so i want to stop right here yvette and um i'll make an appointment with yvette so we can come again and finish this up so we'll we'll pick right up where we left off at the point where you've met lisa your children are in this school and naturally you gravitate towards each other because you're the only two people of color there and you form a relationship. So God is good. I've heard so much that I'd like to question you on or at least to make points on. Uh, But we're going to stop right now um, today and uh, we'll pick up so that our audience can can follow. And you know, this is good because now I just put up your last one. This one is coming and then we'll we'll have another one and, and maybe it will end it, maybe it won't because we've got so much to talk about yet. Um, so I'm thankful that you came and I'm so grateful that you're willing to give your testimony. And if you would like to say anything to just wrap up this session, it would be good. You go right ahead. Have you anything to, to share? To wrap up, uh, I really, so many times as, uh, I think uh, folks who are struggling, going through why are things happening in the world and why is God allowing those things to happen and does he really care and why is there a struggle? Those are some of the pertinent questions. And, um, uh, uh, I, uh, 
all I can say is that I don't know why a lot of things occur, but I choose to trust that God will overcome and God will help us through those times. And times, sometimes we need to question, we need to go through that, uh, that, that time of, of distance and separation so that we can see the need we have for Him. So I'm grateful for that. Um, I can see that all that, that space that I've made for Him those years, um, it let me realize I needed I needed a power that was so much greater than me. Amen. So the next time when how I made that transition. Absolutely. We will get right back to it. And I want to say thank you so much again. Uh, thank you to the listening audience. I do hope you will join us for the next session when we will cover the rest of this, hopefully. Uh, and if not, we'll just do another session. I thank God for, the, for this uh, particular format because I have the freedom to go or you know to come back again and and review so guys out there be safe stay well take serious social distancing i've worked in epidemiology uh, outreach before and i know how important that is so do not take um take this lightly be very serious about the your own health and your your own life and the lord god bless and keep you until we meet again i do pray that you will be safe until the next um, the next time we gather. Please leave your comments on the app, if you will, and I will, as I said, take time to read them in one session all to itself. God bless. We'll see you next time.